Welcome to another video on the DIY BMS system and connecting it to the Victron Servo using the CANBUS interface. Previously we covered how to physically connect the two devices together using an RJ45 cable, so if you haven't already watched that video I'd recommend doing that now. It's taken me a considerable amount of effort to get to the uh, CANBUS communicating successfully to the Victron equipment and as usual these code changes are available on GitHub. To get the latest controller firmware jump over to GitHub, and for the release of this code, you won't need to update any of the modules, it's just the controller. So if you follow the instructions under the section where it says how to use the code, I still get requests from people who are struggling to compile, compile the code using Visual Studio. There's no need to do that, just use the pre-compiled pre files and all the complexity is taken away from you. If you click here, this takes you to the page with a step-by-step -step instruction on using the Node MCU flashing tool. When you're upgrading the firmware on the controller, it's best to stop charging or discharging the battery because the controller won't be able to monitor it while the upgrade is in progress. Unfortunately, a version of the Node MCU tool isn't available for Linux machines. So on these platforms, use the native ESP tool Python script. You can see the command line you need to run here. So after the updated firmware is installed on the controller, a new menu option appears for Victron Canvas. The Victron Servo is connected to the DRI BMS using the CAN bus and also to, the, to my home network using an Ethernet cable. It has a remote con console which we'll be using the, during this video to show you the setup. I don't have any other Victron, Victron uh, devices apart from the DIY BMS connected to the Servo, so it shows an empty overview page where normally you would see activity from the inverter or so solar charger. You can see the battery is shown but doesn't have any values associated with it yet. If I arrange the two windows side by side, you can see what happens when we, get, when we enable it. I'll now enable CAN bus communication in the DIY BMS and everything should spring to life. Whilst I'm on this page, I'd like to point out the warnings on the screen. This new CAN interface is still experimental. So if you try it and find some problems, please report them to me via GitHub so I can fix them. Unless you enable a feature called DVCC on the Victron side, the BMS cannot change the behaviour of the Victron equipment, and we'll cover what that means later on. So now on the servo screen, we can see that the communication has, has started, and the BMS is now sending data which the servo is displaying. We can navigate through the menus to the device list, and here you can see the battery voltage, current and power values are taken from the DIY BMS current monitor. You can also see the state of charge of the battery, which we covered in the last video, and the cell battery temperature calculated from the external sensors on the modules. If we look at the device information, we have the DOI BMS name and the firmware version. The Victron devices allow you to raise alarms and warnings. The alarm page shows all the different types of alarms available. DOI BMS supports most of these and I'll demo those in a little while. If we go to the details page, you can also see the minimum and maximum temperatures and voltages reported by the BMS. It also tells you which, which cell this relates to. The B0M1 means bank zero module one. You can also see the total number of modules connected to the BMS and the total battery capacity that we configured in the current monitor settings. Okay then, so let me show you an alarm triggering on the survey. On my BMS, I've got a simple 3S setup. Let's change the over voltage alarm to an artificially low value so the alarm is triggered. Uh, let's pick 12 volts exactly. The battery is at 12 and a half volts, so it should trigger the alarm immediately. DIY BMS will transmit alarms for under and old over voltage and cell temperature. It will also report if the controller runs into an internal error or emergency stop situation. The servo keeps a log of the notifications and it also has an inbuilt beeper which can be set up to alert you. Victron also provides their customers with an online portal which communicates with their devices and it's called VRM. Here's my dashboard. You can see that the DIY BMS battery data is being tr transmitted and logged by the Victron portal, along with any alerts that it generates. Earlier I mentioned a Victron function called DVCC. 
That stands for distributed voltage and current control. Normally, the servo, servo device is a passive monitor. It sits collecting data and looking for alerts and provides an interface between the devices and the Victron portal. All the devices connected to the servo still operate independently in this mode. So a solar charger, for example, will use its own logic to determine how and when to charge a battery and also when to stop. Enabling DVCC allows the servo to become an active controller. In this mode, it will now command the chargers and inverters to operate as the BMS tells it to. So in this mode, there are three parameters controlled by the BMS. The charge voltage limit, the charge current limit, and the discharge current limit. Victron devices connected to the servo will then disable their internal charge algorithms and simply do what they're told by the battery. There is no need to set up charge voltages or choose the charge algorithm type in the Victron kit. I'll also remind you that this is still an experimental feature for the DIY BMS, so please use it with care and feedback to me on how it can be improved. The DIY BMS has three sets of parameters it uses to control these limits. The first I've called default are the settings which you would use when the battery is in a normal state and needs charging. So set the ideal maximum voltage for the battery and the maximum current levels you're expecting. Should a module in the BMS go into bypass and begin to, begin to cell balance, the second set of parameters are used. Ideally, these will be lower than the default settings, allowing the battery to balance and the charges to back off. Finally, should a BMS error occur, the third set of parameters are sent to the servo. This should stop the charges and inverters and shut down the system. From the documentation provided to me by Victron, it appears that the voltage limit has the most beneficial effect on Victron equipment rather than the current limits, so that should be the main parameter to change. These three levels are a little crude at the moment, and I'd like suggestions from you in regards to how you'd want me to uh, change this feature in the future. You don't have to enable DVCC for all the other data to, to be transmitted into the Victron system. Uh, so this is definitely for people who have the whole Victron ecosystem of chargers and inverters. So have fun integrating DIY BMS with your Victron kit and let me know how you get on. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It only takes a second of your time, but really helps me with the YouTube rankings. See you soon.